be with you. And I mention both Jesus and Muhammad's names. Peace be upon them both, because they were both authors of truth and reality. And uh, today, we get ready to get, you know, we get ready to go for a ride, and you got to have a ticket to get on this train. <laughs> They're a little animated, <laughs> that's all. <laughs> and uh, today I have community activist Harold Davis with me. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. And Thank you for inviting me, brother. Bless you, yes, brother. Sir. Can you Thank tell you, the people something about yourself before we get into the meat uh, out of the well, hog of, of the well, conversation? I mean, just, uh, you know, just honored to be here tonight with you, you know. I always watch your show. And, and basically, you know, uh, I'm here as a community activist somebody that's concerned about our young people and the things that are going on in the community. And, you know, I have a deep concern and a deep love for our people. I see you and Brother Boise and I got the Koofy man, wound him, wound him out. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all don't hold back nothing, yeah, man. Sir. I, I yes, appreciate sir. that, yes, man. Sir. And, yeah. you know, well, there's something going on at WBON. If you're listening, call your friend. We got to find out what's going on. There may be some type of litigation. Because Charles Butler, according mm -hmm. to the emails that I have received, have been saying things that may be out of character. Yes, sir. And for example, you know, we'll stop. what has he been saying, man? He's been say I heard him, mm -hmm. you know, when somebody told me they heard him say on, on the radio that you've been protesting. Yes. You know, what's, what, what's going on with this protesting thing? Well, I mean, it all started at the uh, Tea Party. I was there. April 15th, mm -hmm. and uh, I asked Chairman Steele a question. Uh, first, it was a guy named Mike Connolly that got up and said that Chicago Public Schools gets $15,000 a year. Yes, sir. Per student, yes, and sir. I asked him to prove it. And so, you know, and, and I know that to be just an out-and-out -out lie. And then I asked Chairman Steele, who said he was concerned about education in the black community. I said, well, if you were so concerned and your party, your party took, your party told the Democratic Party they would not sign the stimulus bill until the $118 billion allocated for public education came out. Yes, sir. And I asked him that question, and you, and you know he didn't answer. Yeah, I was there. And, um, he, yes, sir. And Betty, he challenged you, too, to well, not a duel, but... <laughs> I mean, but he basically said, you know, he wanted to have a dialogue with me, but then Charles Butler, you know, he said this is some nigga shit, and then he called the police on me. I mean, so, you, now, you, know. you know. the thing I don't understand, mm -hmm. Brother Harold, you know, being a community active, this was an open forum. If yes, it's sir. an open forum, anybody has the ability to ask a question, don't yes, they? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, and why did he get, you mentioned something about boo late, but why did he get so outraged? Well, I think he and got outraged. And those don't know who we're talking about, we're talking about um, Charles Butler, WBON radio station. He comes on at 7, seven, seven to 10, 10 o'clock at yes, night. Sir. Yes, sir. Why did he get Well, I mean, I saw what they had gave three people questions to ask and had written them down for him. So I guess, you know, I was sitting there and, I, you know, I didn't ask permission to ask a question. They were up there lying, so I challenged them. I mean, Mike Connolly told a lie. He said Chicago public schools get 15000 per student. And if this is all a lie, and if it's all a lie, like Charles Butler says I'm lying, he said he stopped me before I asked any questions, then we have subpoenaed the tape from Channel 7. Wow. They filmed it all, so we'll see who's lying. Okay. Now, you know what? He's been on the radio. Charles Butler, WBON, has been on the radio saying from what I, you know, information that I received from somebody, mm -hmm. that you've been in jail. Yes, sir. That you're a jailbird. Yes, yes, sir. I, I think that's slander, but you know, you might have a better take on it. I mean, well, he, he said I've been in the penitentiary. He said I threatened to kill him. I you mean, threatened he, to kill him? Yeah, I mean, he, these are the lies that he continues to say on the radio. I mean, he, apparently, he has, he has uh, some kind of distinction that he can't tell the truth from a lie. And if he says it, then it's true. I mean, if you listen to some of the callers, I mean, I heard a guy say, well, Mr. Butler, how do, who determines if I'm asking an intelligent question or an ignorant question? He said he determines that. And so, you know, basically for him to lie and say that I've been in the penitentiary. Yes, sir. For him to lie and say that I threatened to kill him. For him to lie and say that Mayor Daley pays me $65 to protest people. For him to lie and say Mayor Daley pays for a protest bus, 
freedom ain't free. And I'm able to, to look at this from a standpoint, if I come and protest you, I got 150 black men in my organization that, yes, that, that come anytime we ask them to come. And so I don't have to pay anybody. I mean, the sick part about what, what a lot of people like him don't understand is that there are black men that have independent uh, uh, ideas about what needs to be done in the community. And they don't need somebody from like him coming from Detroit or San Diego, yes. wherever he says he's yes. from, he's not qualified to talk about our children in Chicago. He calls them urban terrorists. Yes, sir. And I don't know why he would say something like that. Let me ask you something. Clear Channel, you know what, WVON, I believe, might be owned by Clear Channel. Who's, who owns Clear Channel? Who, why are they allowing him? I'm asking you two questions to come on. Who owns Clear well, Channel? I mean, Clear Channel's owned by the Mays Brothers, but Clear Channel was up for sale right now. I mean, I've read things in the, in the paper that they have perspective that they're trying to sell the company or something, but I know it was owned by the Mays Brothers. Uh, 1996, when they deregulated the the radio stations, you can only own one station prior to 1996. And then Colin Powell's son, yes, sir. who was the FCC chairman, allowed them to come in. In no time, they ended up with 1,800 stations. And so, you know, that, that's a whole nother issue. But as far as the urban terrorists word, I think that, that is, that's not a word that should be used to describe the conditions or the behavior of black children. I mean, you can't say urban terrorists and use that, use that term to describe behavior, the behavior of black children. I just don't think that that, that makes sense. Okay, you know what, we got a call and I, you know what, I'd be dismayed if I don't let the yes, call to get in to voice their opinion and call up your friends <laughs> and um, go ahead and call and beat the drums. Uh, yes, uh, Davis, uh, I agree with you 100%. Why don't that guy uh, address the real issues uh, in the black community and stop being a damn punk about it and uh, right. sitting around lying on you while you're working very hard to uphold the community. Why don't he uh, address the real issue about how all these black men were wrongly uh, uh, sent to prison yeah. for no reason? So. Why don't his punk ass stop the lies <laughs> like and yes, tell sir. the truth yes, and ma'am. back up off of you, David? Yes, ma'am. Thank you and keep up the good work and don't Thank listen you. to that punk jump. Thank, Thank you. you. I like that, didn't I? But go ahead. Sister. Thank you, sister. I mean, she's absolutely right. Um, I mean, you know, it's one thing to stand behind the microphone and describe the conditions of our people. Yes, sir. I mean, you know, uh, 50 Cent and uh, Rick Ross, those are studio gangsters. Uh, studio you know, gangsters. Studio sir. gangsters, yeah. I mean, 50 Cent may have lived some of those conditions, but yeah. Rick Ross, whose real name is Le, uh, William Lemille Williams, I mean, this guy is a Florida correctional officer. Yes. Sir. So he has no no right to stand in front of a TV and, and promote this ignorance that he's some big dope dealer that he took on the term Highway Rick Roth or the real guy in California that bought crack cocaine into California. I mean, so, uh, you know, Charles Butler, like the 10 people that he has calling in every day. Yes. I sir. mean, they call in from the western suburbs, the southern suburbs. If you notice, they don't live in Chicago. Yes, sir. So they're not qualified to talk about our children unless you out here trying to make a difference. I mean, if you're going to just get on the radio and say they're urban terrorists, uh, they need to be killed, they need to be locked up, they need to meet force with force and all these things, and you don't even understand the conditions of these young people and how they got like they got. These boys are 15 to 16 years old. They yes, just sir. got here. So how are they going to be responsible for the conditions in America? And people, you ought to be outraged. You know what? Call your friend and watch this. Call them. Okay, next caller, go ahead and beat the drums. Go ahead. Hello. Go ahead. Yes, hi, how are you? All right, how you doing? Why can't we boycott this black radio station? Because if we boycott them, they will lose money and not be on the air anymore. Oh, that's a good question. That's a good question. Where can people join you? Where can well, people join your boycott at? Well, well, right now, I mean, my case is litigated in, in, in the court system. Okay. But Chairman Fred Hampton, uh, he's picked up the mantle. I mean, he went out there, and I didn't even know the chairman was 